today on your world why 54 collective uh the idea is to embrace uh, uh the pan-african sense um 54 in the name it's a representation of 54 countries so what are some of the success stories that you have seen uh, what you would see typically in the streets of nairobi mm -hmm. Um, you will see these micro entrepreneurs, and most of them are women. What would be your advice to that young person who's watching you this morning? You say, I want to grow and be like Mr. Bongani. <laughs> um, it is my ambition yeah. uh, to help Af young Africans to look at the challenges that is, that is in front of them mm -hmm. as an opportunity to innovate. Mm -hmm. Well, a very good morning to you. It's good to see you right here on Your Wild, hoping that you're having a better start to the day. Welcome to the show. My name is Winnie Lubembe, and today we'll be focusing on one of the biggest venture capital firms uh, in the African continent, and we'll be talking about 54 Collective. And listen to this. Uh, venture capital is an essential source for raising money, especially if startups lack access to bank loans or other debt instruments. And today, our focus is on one of the largest and most active investors on the continent that target early stage African startups, including over 20 in Kenya alone. It is a big day for venture capital investment firm Founders Factory Africa because they have rebranded and changed its name to 54 Collective. So to find out more about the company's new direction and what it has in store for the Kenyan and African startup sector, we have 54 Collective CEO, Mr. Bongani Sithole, who's joining us all the way from South Africa via Zoom to tell us more. And Mr. Bongani, it's good to see you this morning. Thank you so much for your time. How's South Africa? Winnie, firstly, thank you so much. Uh, it's good to be here. Um, I'm really privileged uh, to be in this uh, venture capital space. Um, yes, I'm based in South Africa in Johannesburg. Uh, today it's a lovely day. Uh, we are almost at the tail end of winter. Uh, which is quite exciting. So um, good to be here. Uh, this morning, it's such a very big day um, for you and your team. So I'm just going to say congratulations. Uh, but before we take a look or really understand why this is such a big day for you, like I said, you have a wealth of experience. I mean, over the last 18 years, you have built three technology businesses from the ground up, of course, being a tech uh, entrepreneur. So then my first question would uh, to be, um, venture capital ecosystem right here in the continent, right? What does that look like? It's quite interesting. And I think maybe to start from the background that you've shared, I'm an entrepreneur myself, mm -hmm. and um, I have seen firsthand uh, the need to use entrepreneurship in the continent to essentially build the economies across the 54 states that we have in Africa. With that in mind, I think um, entrepreneurship in its sense needs quite a lot of capital uh, to essentially enable entrepreneurs to build um, their businesses. And hence the reason why, um, you know, in my fourth business, which is what we are discussing today, 54 Collective, where we act essentially fund entrepreneurs uh, across the 54 states, venture capital in itself uh, across Africa over the last 10 years, it has grown quite substantially. I think you might have seen some statistics uh, over the last uh, two years that we have surpassed over six, $6 billion uh, in terms of funding, both um, in Africa and you know capital coming from the outside. Mm -hmm. That is a testament for us to see that there is a growing uh, need uh, to fund more entrepreneurs in solving uh, local problems for Africans in their local market. Mm -hmm. So we are excited about the growth. It's very vibrant. Uh, we are seeing a lot more uh, countries now emerging uh, as um, you know within within this venture capital space. And as a result, it means that more young people uh, in the African states are realizing that, that the challenges that they're seeing every day, they can be converted mm -hmm. uh, into opportunities and opportunities needs funding. Mm. And hence, that is why venture capital uh, is actually quite an important uh, path in Africa to essentially build our economy. I see that. Focus on solutions. All right, so then we have the different types of funding, you know, from the pre-seed to the seed funding and all the way to the early stage funding. So then what is most common um, right here in the region and where do you focus more as 54 Collective? Good question. So if you look at uh, African general, it's uh, very nascent in many ways. What that means is that we're still quite early in terms of the venture capital space. 
And there are two types uh, of venture capital space, um, if I may. One is early stage and later stage. Okay. Early stage is where we focus. What it means is that we look for entrepreneurs who just have ideas. So essentially it's from day one, you just have an idea, you're looking to launch your product. Okay. And that early stage ranges from idea to what we call pre-series A. Okay. In between those two spectrums, you have concepts, you have pre-seed, you have seed, pre-series A, and then series A. And those are representation of the stage or maturity of a, a an idea or a business. Okay. And the second part of uh, venture capitalist later stage, typically those are uh, post series A, series B, series C, etc. Our focus as uh, 54 Collective, we focus on the early stage. And the reason for that is we have seen a need over the last uh, couple of years, in fact, since we started in 2018, that a lot more young people and entrepreneurs starting businesses, they didn't have enough support at early stage. And the need was twofold. It's both uh, support to entrepreneurs in building their products, but also capital that was needed. So we saw a need for us to play in that early stage space to work with uh, entrepreneurs to provide those two services. One, uh, hands-on support or a side-by-side -side support, mm -hmm. but also providing the needed capital to essentially help de-risk the businesses for later stage investors. And um, aside from you know the, the whole financial support, what are some of the other things that you've noticed that this young people need, and especially in the early stages? What we've realized is that uh, uh, and I'll give you a bit of a background uh, uh, about me, you know, because of an entrepreneur myself, mm -hmm. I have realized that many of African people, uh, they don't have an uncle or a brother or a sister who has built a business before. Okay. So what typically means is that um, by the time you actually look for pathways to solve certain problems and you look at entrepreneurship as an opportunity, mm -hmm. you don't have that uh, background or support around you that can be able to help you to um, say, here's how you go about it. And I think building a VC firms like a 54 Collective, where we have side-by-side -side support, we enable entrepreneurs to look at the stage where they are mm -hmm. and tailor make support that is needed on mm -hmm. at the stage where they, where they operate. What we equally have realized is that the different maturity curves of businesses, they need different type of uh, um, uh, services. Mm -hmm. And um, we then figure out what is needed based on the market dynamics, okay. the stage of the business and provide those support. And to give you some of the, some examples, mm -hmm. we provide from um, how do you build your product? How do we enable your business to grow? Uh, how do we broker partnerships that are needed for purposes of distribution? How do we help you to get the talent that is needed and just general finance support that you need as an entrepreneur to holistically think about your business, mm -hmm. both from launching to also getting your first customer, but also to think about your scale mm -hmm. um, at a later stage. Yeah. So we provide that range of support depending on where you are. I see that. Okay. Um, so like I said, this is a very big day uh, to you and your team. Uh, formerly, you were Founders Factory Africa. But right now, uh, it is 54 Collective. That is such a cool name, by the way. Um, so I'm very curious Thank to understand why, why 54 Collective? Why that name specifically? Um, so the name actually signifies our evolution, mm -hmm. right, from Founders Factory Africa. Uh, the idea is to embrace uh, uh, the Pan-African sense. Um, 54 in the name, it's a representation of 54 countries. Mm -hmm. And the collective basically means that we are looking to uh, work with um, our team uh, that we have a representation across the continent and i'll i'll talk about um where we where we have uh, a representation mm -hmm. but we work with a variety of people beyond our team we work with other investors we also work with our investors who have a pan-african uh, presence that collective nature for us to build helps entrepreneurs to build without boundaries and yeah. and that helps us to essentially unlock uh, opportunities and remove the boundaries that uh, entrepreneurs face on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. um so the 54 collective is actually an evolution to embrace um mm -hmm. uh, our pan-african sense to essentially uh, find uh, innovation from any of these 54 mm -hmm. uh, states across africa mm -hmm. i say that i say that i mean we always talk of this joke that africa we consider ourselves the one big family so so it's good to, to, to hear and to see what you're saying um you know about the spirit of pan-africanism so um again the former 
found, uh, Founders Factory Africa. This was founded in 2018, but since then, yes. again, you have invested in over 70 businesses, and this is across the region. That is that is really really cool to see. Um, so, yeah. talk us. I mean, take us through this whole rebrand. Um, aspect of the same because we've talked about the name which is really cool but what what enforced the rebrand so when we started uh, as you said 54 collective uh, formerly founders factory africa when we started in 2018 mm -hmm. uh, we used to uh, provide uh, certain programs build and scale mm -hmm. that uh, many founders uh, who knew uh, founders factory and 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 uh, the last six years of existence mm -hmm. they would know that we had a program called build and scale so we have evolved from that uh, into a company that now provides a service agnostic to programs. We are a VC fund mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to be an accelerator okay. and evolved into a pure VC fund. And we used to provide uh, two things, uh, services, and we used to charge entrepreneurs for those services. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also used to provide uh, equity uh, or capital for equity in return. Mm -hmm. We have learned uh, that um, the idea of charging uh, services for equity uh, in this evolving and maturing uh, ecosystem mm -hmm. was something that we needed to evolve as well. So as part of the evolution, one of the things that we've changed was to then move into um, a free model or at least the value add services uh, where founders are no longer paying for services. Mm -hmm. And we have evolved away from an acceleration model, which was programmatic in sense uh, to becoming a VC firm. Mm -hmm. And um, we have also moved from the three sectors that we used to focus on in our, in our first uh, uh, business, uh, which was uh, ag tech, um, health tech and uh, fintech. We are now uh, more agnostic uh, across the, the continent, mm -hmm. which means that uh, we are now enabled to find a lot more innovation across the continent from a perspective of our geography focus, mm -hmm. but also um, uh, the idea that uh, we have uh, a representation up, uh, across uh, four key markets. So we have a presence uh, in, in South Africa, in Nigeria and in Kenya, mm -hmm. and now we are launching in Egypt. And those mm -hmm. four geographies will help us to have a full um, African presence to be able to provide those support. So today, 54 Collective is a VC firm that is a, enabled uh, by a 70-man team uh, providing all of these services for free to entrepreneurs but with catalytic capital. Mm, I say that. So what is it that people should expect from 54 Collective? Because there's a lot of expectations Great. when there's a new, you know, when there's change. Uh, so what is it that people need to expect from you? So let's talk about what VC firms uh, does uh, today mm -hmm. uh, in Africa. Typically, when you get to a VC firm, they look at your business, they evaluate it, uh, depending on your value of your business, mm -hmm. they would then um, give you capital and in some shape or form, some advice uh, that, you, that you'd get along the way. Mm -hmm. um, 54 Collective is very unique. We go beyond that. We have created a model that it's first of its kind mm -hmm. uh, in Africa through um, our investors and LPs that we have today. Mm -hmm. When you come to uh, 54 Collective as a founder, First and foremost, you will get uh, equity capital that we would uh, then, uh, in exchange of giving you that capital, uh, get equity. The second thing that you get is what we call non-dilutive capital. What that means is that we've realized that entrepreneurs um, didn't have enough capital to test out their business models earlier on. Mm -hmm. So we have um, uh, created an extension where we're giving capital uh, that is basically a loan at a a low um, uh, interest rate of about 5%. It's, you'll never find that anywhere in Africa. Mm -hmm. So that's very unique. And uh, found, founders coming into 54 Collective, they'll get that. Mm -hmm. The last thing that you will get is a 70 main team um, across Africa, right? And that enables us to essentially take a business from one region to the other. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to expand from Kenya to Nigeria, we have presence. If you are building in Egypt, you're looking to move into Francophone market, we can be able to, to, to do that. Mm -hmm. So we are one of the large, in fact, the largest VC firm with quite a unique uh, model. And that's why we call it kind of catalytic model because it encompasses both uh, equity capital, but also uh, a non-dilutive capital, which is this loan that we're providing uh, at a low rate uh, with a team uh, of 70 people across the continent. That is experts uh, that basically built with entrepreneurs on their local markets. Mm -hmm. I see that. Um, so I'm, I'm so curious about the regions, um, but you said you are in Kenya, South Africa, 
Nigeria, right? Nigeria. And now you're actually venturing yes. into Egypt, which is really cool. So I'm curious, into what, what is it about this this region? And, and why are you, where are you located? Yeah, so um, when we started in 2018, we started in three regions. Uh, we started in South Africa, Kenya, and Nigeria. Yeah, right. And um, with the funding that we have just received from our investors mm -hmm. um, since last year, and of course the evolution into 54 Collective, that capital has enabled us to focus a lot more on young people, women, uh, to reach uh, diversified uh, backgrounds and more regions. Mm -hmm. So um, we wanted to then look at where is capital flowing into, right, VC capital. And if you look at the last 10 years, the main three hubs were Kenya, Nigeria, and Egypt. But of recent, the last five years, mm -hmm. we've seen quite a, a huge growth in the North region, which is Egypt. Mm -hmm. And hence the reason why we also wanted to participate in, in that market. You'll see that the uh, distribution of investments now, mm -hmm. they almost at par in these four key uh, key markets. So as a, as a result, we are equally on those four key markets. Mm -hmm. And those uh, hubs enables us to reach all the, uh, um, you know, north, west, uh, south, um, uh, and and um, uh, um, uh, and east, mm -hmm. uh, relatively, so that we can be able to touch more entrepreneurs. We are a very distributed company, so we are not necessarily uh, uh, HQ'd, mm -hmm. so to speak, uh, okay. in South Africa or Kenya, Nigeria. We are a very distributed company. Mm -hmm. In fact, in terms of numbers, um, we are almost equally distributed. I mean, in South Africa, we're about 25 mm -hmm. people. In Kenya, we have about 23. In Nigeria, we've got about 18. So you can already see that we are a very distributed company uh, mm -hmm. from that perspective. Okay. All right. Just in case someone is watching and thinking, where do I get to go to the office? <laughs> You're equally distributed. Which no, is, we have, we have, which is really good we have offices across all those key markets. I see that. I see that. The big four. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. So you mentioned women, and there's something that really caught my interest uh, as far as women are concerned. Do you want to tell us about that? Yes, uh, it's something that I'm actually quite passionate and uh, um, it's quite interesting uh, that we are pushing quite a lot more uh, of as a, as a VC firm. If you look globally, um, more women are actually being um, provided training and less funding support. Mm. And if you were to look at statistics, less than 10% of women globally are being funded. Mm. And the question for us is, um, how can we be more intentional about supporting more women entrepreneurs mm -hmm. uh, to increase participation into the VC space and more broadly into entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. It is our goal as a firm that uh, over the next five years of our deployment, we want to get to 50% of all our portfolios having a representation of women. So it's my goal to drive one investments, but also our team to focus on ensuring that we get to a 50% uh, parity mm -hmm. of investment. It is important to our company. It is important for the continent and more globally, it is important to uh, make sure that we embrace mm -hmm. um, women. Uh, we embrace the fact that they can be able to participate and build strong companies mm -hmm. uh, that can create jobs, mm -hmm. that can create impact across the uh, across the continent. Mm -hmm. So if there's a woman who's watching us uh, this morning would want to understand, uh -huh, so how much do I get? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So. Uh, and thanks for touching on our uh, uh, on our uh, investments. Mm -hmm. In fact, with um, 54 Collective, uh, we have then decided to look at uh, to relook at our ticket sizes or the investment check size. Mm -hmm. um, so we fund up to 500,000 uh, US dollars, and that is what we call catalytic capital. And to break it down a little bit for you, mm -hmm. uh, on the equity side, you will get up to 250,000 US dollars, depending on the stage of the business. Mm -hmm. On the catalytic side, you will equally get almost the same amount, um, uh, up to 250. Mm -hmm. The difference is that um, we intentionally driving a lot more capital towards uh, women founders. So if you are a, a male founder on the catalytic side mm -hmm. or the, the, the loan side, you will get um, a, a 100,000 US dollars mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of capital. Mm -hmm. But if it's a women-led business, we top it up with another 150. 
So that's where the 250 on the loan side or the catalytic side comes in. Mm -hmm. And then on the uh, equity side, it's then up to 250. So we are very intentional Mm -hmm. on giving women a lot more money than uh, male counterparts Mm -hmm. uh, to further the ambitions um, uh, of of getting to a 50% uh, parity Mm -hmm. in terms of investments in our portfolio. I see that. Uh, And you, I mean, we have like, two minutes to go before we're going to break. Um, you talked about ticket size funding and probably someone who's watching us uh, this morning is wondering, uh, okay, what exactly does that mean and what determines what company X gets versus what uh, company Y gets, aside from being you know, woman-led or men-led? Yes. So when we started earlier, you asked about the different stages. Mm-hmm. Uh, we spoke about concept, pre-seed, seed, and seed plus. Mm-hmm. So those are sort of like the four um, stages, if you will, before you get to uh, Series A. Mm-hmm. Typically, what happens in a VC world, mm-hmm. those stages means that it's a sign of maturity, and as a result, it means that the more you grow, the more your business is uh, valued even uh, even higher. Mm-hmm. So, depending on where you are, then the ticket sizes are different. At the lower side, where you just have an idea and a concept, you will typically get um, a hundred hundred and fifty thousand mm-hmm. uh, of equity, and you will also get a uh, hundred and fifty thousand of non-dilutive capital at the lower side. Okay. On the top side, that's where the five hundred uh, total comes in, where you get a total of two fifty mm-hmm. um, of equity and also uh, two hundred and fifty of non-dilutive capital. Mm-hmm. Uh, in between, of course, um, you know we look at where the, the business is, and so that's where sort of like the variety of uh, ticket sizes uh, comes in depending on where the stage of the business is. Mm-hmm. I say that. All right. Um, let's take a break. When we come back then, uh, we'd want to understand, so what is the criteria uh, before you settle okay. on a certain business to invest in? I do not want to rush you, you know, through the process because this is a very important process for all the people to understand. So let's take that break. Right. And then when we come back, we'll pick up from there. And we'll see you after the short break. All right, welcome back. Uh, the show is Your World, and just in case you're tuning in right now, today we're focusing on uh, one of the largest venture capital firms right here in uh, the continent, and we are talking about 54 Collective, where, like we said, this is such a big day for 54 Collective as they have rebranded from formerly um, Founders Factory Africa. And we have the CEO here with us to just tell us, first of all, why the rebrand and what is it that you need to know uh, as a person who's watching us this morning. Probably you are an entrepreneur looking to, you know, finance your business and also get technical uh, expertise from, you know, different people. But in this case, 54 uh, collectives. So we have Mr. Bongani Asitole, who's the uh, Chief Executive Officer of 54 Collective with us this morning all the way from uh, South Africa joining us via Zoom. And Mr. Bongani, before we went on a break, we were to pick up on what exactly is the criteria before you decide to invest in a certain business? Uh, great. We look for entrepreneurs across the continent uh, that are solving local problems to essentially find pathways to change their economies. Mm-hmm. And hence, the reason why our venture success platform is built in such a way that is embedded in these markets, because we understand that Africa's got a lot of challenges, but those challenges for us are opportunities. So we look for these entrepreneurs who are um, looking to solve these problems using technology. Mm-hmm. So any tech-led venture across uh, sectors in Africa is what we're looking for at any stage mm-hmm. uh, that we have shared, right from concept to pre-series A. Mm-hmm. That is what we uh, invest into. As long as it's a tech-led business, uh, with a, um, a founder who's very connected to the problem, uh, that is what we back. Of course, it has to be a great founding team, mm-hmm. and our venture success platform uh, will support those entrepreneurs to build. Okay, so solve local problems, that's the biggest thing, all right? Anything that you look yes. at before investing in, in a certain business? Uh, as long as it's a, it's a, it's a tech-led business uh, across that's Africa, it. any yeah. 54 states, mm-hmm. that is what we're looking for. At the end of the day, we strongly believe that um, uh, ideas can come from anywhere. So the idea of working with entrepreneurs 
uh, quite earlier on, we can be able to help them to build and scale their business. Mm -hmm. And we understand that uh, uh, technology and uh, venture capital in itself is quite a risky asset class. Mm -hmm. So we're expecting that there might be failures and it's okay, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The goal is for us to figure out if we can be able to help entrepreneurs uh, solve some of these local uh, pertinent problems that they find themselves in on a day-to-day -day basis. I see that. Um, and we all know how, you know, especially for startups, they have different needs at different points. Others might need, you know, the financial support. Others would need, you know, more of like mentorship. Others would need more of like technical yeah. support. So how much of a factor is this for you as 54 Collective before, you know, you decide to invest in this? And if at all this is a factor? It's actually quite important. And I think as I alluded uh, earlier, mm -hmm. Um, two things that are quite important at early stage. Right. You need capital and you need support. Mm -hmm. We know that money is important, but money is not the entire story in the early stage okay. space. Mm -hmm. And that's where our venture success platform comes in. Mm -hmm. 70 people who are well vested in building and supporting entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the business early stage, we are very clear that there are certain important things that we would need to work with you as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. in order for you to get to your next milestone. What we are cognizant of is that any business of any size, they generally have certain challenges that they need to solve for. What is important though, is to identify the critical points that can actually block the business to get to the next milestone or the next stage. Mm -hmm. So the goal of our venture success platform is to identify those things align with the founder mm -hmm. and make sure that we are clear in terms of what the next six to 12 months look like mm -hmm. so that we can deploy the right support tailored to solve that sp a specific problem to help you get to the next level of your business. Mm -hmm. um, so we are aware mm -hmm. that uh, problems will always exist in business and that's, okay. that's the reason why we've built uh, such a big team across the continent mm -hmm. to help uh, unblock or at least resolve these boundaries that founders found themselves in building their early stage businesses. Mm. And out of curiosity, are there like problems that are unique to the African market or African startups as compared to anywhere in the world? I'm just curious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's lots. Yeah. Um, uh, but the political challenges, um, uh, you know, there's, there's always uh, uh, regulation challenges. Mm -hmm. um, infrastructure uh, is a problem. Mm -hmm. And um, currency devaluations uh, you might have seen in multiple countries. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the challenges or barriers, let me say, yeah. that um, founders across Africa, they find themselves mm -hmm. uh, trying to resolve. And hence the reason why 54 Collective, mm -hmm. we want to redefine how we invest and also how we remove these boundaries, mm -hmm. right, to help entrepreneurs to build without boundaries. And for us, these challenges that I've just alluded to, we view, view those as boundaries that uh, founders typically struggle mm -hmm. uh, to, to solve for. And as a result, we have structured ourselves mm -hmm. uh, in such a way that we've built the right connections, right partnerships across the continent mm -hmm. to enable businesses or founders to build without boundaries. Um, we understand some of these macro challenges mm -hmm. we cannot control, yeah. but um, in, in how we are structured as a pan-African company, we've um, placed ourselves in a situation where we can enable these businesses to build without boundaries. Mm, I like that. No challenge is too big for 54 Collective. Okay. Um, can we then talk about your, your impact strategy and, and what exactly does impact look like to 54 Collective? Um, good question. So if you think about impact generally, I guess in an investment space, typically what you would find is a separation between commercial outcomes and mm -hmm. impact outcomes. Mm -hmm. In our world, we strongly believe that uh, being in an emerging market like uh, Africa, you cannot separate uh, commercial and, and impact. So as a result, we are a company that strongly believe that to sustain impact, it has to be sustained through okay. uh, commercially driven businesses. Mm -hmm. So our goal is we embed, embed impact in everything that we do. Mm -hmm. What that means is that when we look at the business, we look at what you are trying to solve for. The question that we ask ourselves is, what theory of change of impact that we can bake in in what you're doing we're very intentional one in solving poverty alleviation creating jobs mm -hmm. uh, creating opportunities for young people to participate in uh, entrepreneurship mm -hmm. as a way to build uh, their career mm -hmm. we look um, for for you know opportunities 
to create financial inclusion, access to health mm -hmm. uh, across the continent. So those are some of the uh, solutions that we look at um, intentionally building impact as it's embedded in everything that we do mm -hmm. uh, across the company. To sustain that, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we build a commercially sound business mm -hmm. model okay. so that the sustainability of impact that this business is building, it's through the commercial lens. So we don't see it as the separate thing, we see it as being embedded and last but not least, as I said, intentionality to bring a lot more women participation mm -hmm. uh, in the world of entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, again, how then do you measure uh, impact from, you know, through your eyes as, as 54, 54 Collective and also from an entrepreneur's perspective? So there are two sides in, in how we think about um, uh, impact. One is systematic change. Mm -hmm. Systematic change means that um the impact that i'm building through this business it's not one that is that is time bound so i'm not just creating impact short term i'm thinking about the next 10 years the next 15 years if we solve this problem what systematic change is going to um this business is going to create let me give you an example mm -hmm. if today many africans they don't have bank accounts mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. if we are building a business that can uh, create a connection mm -hmm. between historically disadvantaged people who don't have bank accounts. Mm -hmm. How do you enable those people to participate in trade? Mm -hmm. We look for solutions that uh, build uh, that build solutions like that, where you are including people who historically wouldn't be able to participate in trade. Secondly, mm -hmm. um, if you think about people who today cannot uh, afford health care, are there innovative solutions mm -hmm. that we can work with entrepreneurs? to solve for, to start to be able to provide healthcare to historically disadvantaged people mm -hmm. who now can be able to access healthcare in a much cheaper way. Mm -hmm. That is a systematic change mm -hmm. aspect of it. Mm -hmm. The second side of it is, you know, simple things like creating sustainable jobs. Can we build a businesses that inherently can be able to create sustainable jobs? Sustainable jobs means that you're not just creating short term jobs for three months, six months, etc. Mm -hmm. Can we create jobs that in themselves the people who are participating and enjoying uh, the benefit of the solution of the businesses that we are building or innovation that we are building, mm -hmm. can they get, um, or, or rather, can they build um, jobs that can enable them to support their families, take kids to school mm -hmm. and things like that. So that's how we measure uh, impact more broadly, systematic change and job creation. Mm. And you also talked about impact um, versus commercialization aspect of this theme. Is it one of the things that maybe you see a lot of startups and, you know, or businesses that you have invested in and they have grown probably like struggle with? Um, I wouldn't say struggle with. Uh -huh. I think it's just the intentionality to bake uh -huh. in impact. Okay. okay. And, and what they do, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so so I, I think that idea of uh, what impact am I building inherently by building this successful business, mm -hmm. right? And I can give an example. There's mm -hmm. a business that we invested into um, in Uganda. They are uh, financing border drivers, mm -hmm. right? And what it means is that as a micro entrepreneur, now I can look into this business called ASAC. Mm -hmm. um, they will give me the funding to essentially finance a a, a boda. Mm. Now all of a sudden I'm in business, mm -hmm. right? Uh, through that capital now I can be able to save my family because I've got a sustainable job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about embedding impact, mm -hmm. it's to think about the long-term strategy to embed a uh, theory of change into a business like ASAC. What impact are we building over time? Mm -hmm right and mm -hmm. can we intentionally help the entrepreneur to realize the impact that they are building mm -hmm. and number of people that are serving poverty alleviation through the business model that they have mm -hmm. so it's really not a struggle but rather the intentionality to embed impact in a business like that mm, i see that um because again like you said sustainability aspect of the same is pretty much important um so you've talked about you know, an example of a, of a success story in um, in Uganda. But in Kenya, you have invested in yeah. over 20 businesses. And I have looked through your portfolio and uh, to say I'm impressed is an understatement, right? So what are some of the success stories that you have seen, you know, in Kenya and other parts of, of Africa that you have invested in? Yeah, so again, uh, maybe a good example to point out here, which is a story of success and also impact. Uh, what you would see typically in the streets of Nairobi, mm -hmm. Um, you will see these micro entrepreneurs and most of them are women who are building these great textiles mm -hmm. and generally you'll see that they actually sell to fellow Nairobians. And the question is, 
if Af Africa has got capability to produce these great textiles, how do we then create a connection mm -hmm. between Kenya and broadly Africa to a global market mm -hmm. so that we can expose this innovation that we are seeing on the ground day to day mm -hmm. that you and me in, in, in many ways might not actually realize that there's a big business behind mm -hmm. a woman sitting somewhere in the streets of Nairobi. Yeah. So we uh, worked with an entrepreneur mm -hmm. uh, called Ella in a business called Power Powered mm -hmm. by People. Mm -hmm. What the business does is very simple. Mm -hmm. It's connecting micro entrepreneurs producing textiles in Kenya mm -hmm. and uh, other parts of Africa mm -hmm. to global uh, to the global West. So now um, big uh, retailers in um, in the US they can now uh, place orders mm -hmm. of these African textiles mm -hmm. through technology. Mm -hmm. And that's where we talk about that a tech-led business creates both commercial success and impact. Mm -hmm. When you now start to think about these women um, or these micro-entrepreneurs sitting in Kenya, generally they wouldn't have access to global buyers. Mm -hmm. But now through um, you know technology, they get three things. Mm -hmm. One is they're able to expose that textiles to global buyers. Mm -hmm. Number two is that global buyers have access to place orders mm -hmm. and uh, to be able to fulfill those orders, then Powered by People also extend credit uh, to these micro entrepreneurs to be able to, um, uh, to fulfill their orders. Mm -hmm. The third thing that the platform does is to provide visibility mm -hmm. both to the order um, uh, to to the person who's played that placed the order to know where the the, the orders are so that's basically traceability mm -hmm. so that type of a business has uh, grown to essentially give a lot more uh, at micro entrepreneurs in africa an opportunity mm -hmm. to expose that um, that innovation to mm -hmm. uh, to the global uh, to the global west mm -hmm. um, which is quite uh, uh, quite quite interesting and that's what we look at when we say technology in africa has got a potential to export mm -hmm. um what we typically see as a norm in the streets of our countries but to uh, to the global um, uh, market. Mm, all right. And yes, that's a story that you want to share because I know there's so many uh, and you might be yeah. <laughs> at a position trying to understand. So which one do I select a new shot? But yeah, I'm curious. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's one business uh, that I've shared and maybe another story that, mm -hmm. I, that I can share mm -hmm. uh, in Kenya. There's a business called uh, Bupas. Uh, they essentially are digitizing the way in which people um, or, or ordinary citizens starting in Kenya and, and I think Nigeria as well, looking at uh, transportation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and this business started in how do you actually uh, create a digitized ticketing um, uh, 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 processes between bus, train um, and uh, taxis, and they're going to look at uh, other modes of transport, uh, train and also airline. Mm -hmm. So if you come into that platform, essentially, you can buy, uh, you can plan your journey right uh, across different types of uh, mode of transports mm -hmm. that are now well connected so you don't have to think about okay i'm gonna take a matatu here mm -hmm. and then by the time i get to the other side do i take a taxi what mm -hmm. so you can literally just plan your trip right mm -hmm. the goal for this company is to think about how do they create a connected uh, transportation mm -hmm. uh, a platform across africa so mm -hmm. if i'm uh, taking a flight from Kenya to Nigeria, by the time I get to the other side, can I already organize a transport so that mm -hmm. my journey is actually pre-planned mm -hmm. uh, from start to finish? Mm -hmm. That's exciting for us. We know how disconnected the transportation system is uh, across Africa. And what this business is doing, one is digitizing the entire platform, mm -hmm. but two is creating safety for um, you know uh, uh, our citizens, um, creating cross-border transportation. So mm -hmm. that for us is actually quite exciting. And we see that as a uh, a value chain business that is actually digitizing the entire mm -hmm. transportation mechanism across Africa. Yeah. So it's another business that we're equally excited about. And mm -hmm. they've just done an acquisition of uh, another business that primarily was operating in Nigeria and uh, South Africa. So that is a story for of success, but also yeah a story of expansion mm -hmm. as they're looking now to launch in South Africa and also in uh, Nigeria oh, that's coming interesting. out of Kenya. Yeah. And I'm really happy that you've mentioned that because I have used Bupas, <laughs> not for myself, but also not only for oh, myself, great. but yes, but for my family as well. So great. I'm really, really happy that you've mentioned that. Okay. Um, and we all know when it comes to like the venture capital, you know, uh, aspect, we've seen some startups and other businesses sometimes fail. 
right? So the biggest question yeah. would be, so then how as 54 Collective, you know, sort of like cushion some of these businesses from, um, from failing? Because the idea is to, yes, have a startup, but also grow exponentially, uh, but still remain sustainable in, you know, a few years to come. Yeah. So that's where the uh, Venture Success Platform comes, comes in. in. Yes. A Venture Success Platform is a team of 70 people comprised of uh, how do we build products? How do we enable your business uh, to grow? So mm -hmm. you've got a growth team. We help businesses to think about the next uh, cycle of uh, funding. So we prepare these businesses for fundraising. Mm -hmm. We help them with talent. So we enable them to find the right talent depending on where they are. Mm -hmm. We help them with operations um, and any other risky areas. So if you start to think about distribution mm -hmm. um, and expansion to, to other uh, countries, we have a, uh, a team um, uh, within the venture, su venture success platform. Mm -hmm. So the de-risking mechanism that you're speaking of is actually supported by um, a 70, uh, 70 people across the continent and working with these entrepreneurs on their local market. Mm -hmm. What we have learned is that I'm a South African, but I'm running a Pan-African company. Mm -hmm. I don't understand Nigeria or Kenya as much as Kenyans or Nigerians understand True. the local market. Mm. So with that in mind, this team of 70 people, they are very embedded and local in nature because they understand Kenya better than I do. Mm -hmm. So when they work with a Kenyan found startup, they understand the complexity and the nuances of Kenya. Mm. So they work to unblock um, you know, some of these issues and as a result, providing a de-risking mechanism mm -hmm. so that we can create sustainability and assurance that a business can continue to grow mm -hmm. um, and enable them with distribution uh, and expansion into other markets. So mm -hmm. that's what the Venture Success Platform does today in our VC firm mm -hmm. to essentially uh, uh, provide that de-risking mechanism along the journey of building a business with a founder. Um, and we all understand how, you know, increasingly competitive the Africa uh, venture capital landscape is. So I'm just curious, as 54 Collective, how do you then plan to differentiate yourself? Um, firstly, is what I said earlier, we are, we've created a model of uh, first of first of its kind. One, we are the most active early stage investor. Mm -hmm. We are unique because um, there's no venture, uh, a capital company that has got a venture platform of 70 people. Mm -hmm. There's no um, VC firm uh, in the continent that is providing catalytic capital, which means a combination of a, a low cost um, uh, um, loan, mm -hmm. including, uh, including equity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we want to place ourselves in a position where we are best placed to be a best partner mm -hmm. to a founder. So we are very unique in that sense that a startup coming to us, get all of that diversified uh, offering mm -hmm. that none of the VCs in the in the continent uh, does provide. Mm -hmm. So we are excited about where we are and we're very grateful mm -hmm. to our um, uh, LPs or our investors mm -hmm. to give us an opportunity to be Pan-African, mm -hmm. but also to be able to provide all of these diversified um, type of capital and the support that we can provide to, um, uh, to, to founders. So that in itself combined, that's how unique we are. Mm -hmm. And we consistently learn in terms of what uh, founders across the African market needs are so that we can tailor support mm -hmm. uh, to the needs uh, of the local markets. Mm -hmm. I see that. Um, and we talked about, again, there's, there's so much that is happening now. We're seeing technology um, as well being such an important um, you know, part of us, not only as people, but as businesses as well. Um, so I'm just curious to understand, so then how does 54 Collective uh, ensure that in the next few years to come, you will still be here if not grown? Because <laughs> uh, yeah, there's so yeah. many businesses who will still need your support. So many startups who will need uh, your support. So sustainability aspect as 54 Collective, what does that look like? Good question. Um, we are six years in. We started in 2018, and now there's evolution uh, into 54 Collective. Mm -hmm. If you look at our previous model, you look at the model that we have just described over the last um, mm -hmm. um, a couple of minutes as we are describing our evolution. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, you will see how innovative as a company we are. Mm -hmm. We are very bullish to one, disrupt ourselves, mm -hmm. but secondly, to continue to learn mm -hmm. about the needs of African founders. Mm -hmm. And three, to be sensitive to the changes of the uh, microeconomics uh, of Africa. Mm -hmm. 
and to better find ways to support uh, founders in a much better way. Mm-hmm. Last but not least, we consistently look at where uh, technology is going. We understand that technology is a means to an end. Mm-hmm. In itself, it doesn't do much. Mm-hmm. You, you need to find entrepreneurs who are uh, finding problems and looking at, at technology as a way to enable uh, better ways to, to build these solutions. Mm-hmm. So as a company, we consistently uh, be at the forefront of what technology is offering so that as we work with these founders, we can uh, help them to look at the right uh, technology for the problems that they have identified. Mm-hmm. So we consistently evolve ourselves as a company and hence the reason why we're the only VC today that is structured the way we are mm-hmm. because of the need and the sustainability for us to consistently mm-hmm. uh, be better partners for founders. Mm, I like that. Um, do you have a, a goal? Because I know so far you have invested in over 70 businesses. Um, so what is that ideal goal for 54 Collective, where as the CEO you'll sit back and say, you know what, I am happy, I am content. Do you have a specific yeah. target? So over, over the next five years, and we are two years in uh, mm-hmm. almost, um, we look into invest uh, uh, over 100 businesses, and to be specific, 105 uh, businesses across the continent. Mm. We are looking to train at least 5,000 entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. and we are looking to support uh, small uh, and medium businesses, at least about uh, 1,500 of those. Mm -hmm. So that is our goal. And we want to look at all those investments, Mm -hmm. creating um, direct and indirect jobs uh, as a uh, um, uh, as an intention mm. uh, to create impact uh, in the continent. And of course, all of those businesses that we're supporting and entrepreneurs that we will, will be uh, providing capital to, mm-hmm. we want to see them successful, okay. right? We want to make sure that each and every business that they build, it's commercial in nature, mm. but also creating impact behind uh, 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 behind the, their businesses. Mm-hmm. So the numbers that I've shared with you is what we're looking to achieve over the next five years. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are very bullish mm. um, in terms of the innovation that we would like to find in the 54 mm-hmm. countries uh, across Africa. All right. And just in case someone is watching us this morning and thinking, hmm, okay, I am very interested. How then do they get in touch with you? First and foremost, uh, we are online, uh, 54 collective dot, dot VC as our website. Mm-hmm. So if you are a young person, you're a woman, you're a founder, you have a startup, you are looking to get support and capital um, and enjoy the uh, value added services from our venture success platform, mm-hmm. um, you're more than welcome to visit our website. Mm-hmm. Um, you will be able to navigate through the website you will be able to see where you fit in mm-hmm. as a as a as an entrepreneur or your business, and you can essentially apply. Mm-hmm. And we will look at your business, and of course, our team will come back to you and engage, mm-hmm. and we can be able to um, see if we can invest you into your business and help you. All right. So, for your parting shot, as we conclude uh, the show this morning, what would be your advice to that young person who's watching you this morning? You say, "I want to grow and be like Mr. Bongani." <laughs> Um, It is my ambition uh, to help young Africans to look at the challenges that is is in front of them Mm -hmm. as an opportunity to innovate. Mm -hmm. In many emerging markets, many people continue to complain about the problems that's in front of them, Mm -hmm. as opposed to looking at them as an opportunity. So what I would like to leave young people with is every african problem that's in front of us is an opportunity for us to build this continent Mm -hmm. we can grow our economies using entrepreneurship we can grow our economies looking at innovation and how we can expand and serve more markets Mm -hmm. than your original market so if young people are starting to look at the challenges that's in front of them and they believe that they are uh, entrepreneurs in their own right to solve this problem Mm -hmm. 54 collective Mm -hmm. is a partner to help you build and solve these problems together. Mm, I really like that. Thank you very much, sir, for your time this morning. Mr. Bungani Sitole, who's a 54 Collective CEO. Once again, congratulations on the rebrand and uh, the relaunch. And we really, Thank really you. hope uh, that you continue to do amazing things, not only in you know a few African countries. Like you said, now you're investing uh, your in for uh, the big four, I would say, Kenya, Egypt, uh, South Africa, as well as Nigeria. But we hope that the next time, probably we might be having this conversation, you'll be in you know, all the different parts uh, of the African continent. So all the very best and uh, 
Kwanza, congratulations to you and your team. Really, thank you so much. It was good to be here. All right. And that marks the end of our show this morning right here on Your World. I'm pretty sure all the young people, you've learned so much from today's conversation. My name is Winnie Lubembe. Have yourselves a lovely day ahead. And we will see you next time right here on Your World. All right. Mr. Bonadi, are you okay? Yes, I'm, I'm okay and I can hear you. Oh, okay. All right. We're ready to start. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay.